Hi, Mrs. Slavitetsky. We are very excited that you're going to be an instructor on Chabad at our courses, and I'm personally looking forward to the course, as uh, I'm sure many, many more are as well. Would you do us a favor and uh, please introduce yourself to all of our viewers uh, at Chabad at our courses? My name is Hannah Slavitetsky. I was born in Venezuela. I grew up in Brooklyn, and I live in Baltimore, Maryland. I teach high school as well as adult education, and I absolutely love teaching Tanakh. This is a story about Avraham and Sarah, Abraham and Sarah, and it is a part of Tanakh. It's part of the five books of Moses, the Chumash. What about this story are you particularly passionate about personally? In other words, why, why is this a subject that you chose to, to teach? So I've been lucky enough to be teaching Torah for many years, and I grew up studying these stories from when I was a little kid. But somehow, as an adult, when you restudy these stories, you look at it from a different perspective, and I find that every time I learn the story again, something different kind of jumps out at me. I particularly chose this topic because Avram and Sarah are the forefather and the foremother of the Jewish people. So this is really important to who we are as a people, and it's important to understand where we come from and what values they teach us for eternity. Okay, that's, uh, yeah, I guess that's true if you think about it. Uh, and, and all that question, actually, it, it leads me to think about something else. Every time you hear Abraham's name, Avram's name, you also hear Sarah's name. And it's the same thing with Isaac, with Yitzchak and his wife. Are they two independent stories that are connected because they're married? Or is their story um, and their marriage really all the same thing? Yeah, um, of course. You know, Abram and Sarah partner together actually as a team. You know, we see throughout the story, Rashi tells us, for instance, that Abram would convert the men, Sarah would convert the women. Abram could not have achieved what he did without his partner, Sarah. So in every relationship, and we're particularly focusing on this particular couple as opposed to the other forefathers and foremothers, um, the two of them really achieve together because they work together in harmony. So without one or the other, we wouldn't have the same story. Right, we couldn't have the Jewish people without Sarah. And if anything, we particularly see that God told Avram, whatever Sarah tells you, listen to her voice. So her voice is pretty important to the story. One of the interesting stories that I've come across about Sarah, particularly, is she's been informed, she's you know well advanced in, in, in her years, and she's been informed by angels that she's going to bear, uh, have a child. And she, as far as she knew, you know, for, the, for, for many, many years she didn't have children. She was barren. She wasn't able to have children. Uh, and all of a sudden these angels come and say, you're going to have a child. And her reaction was to laugh, you know, as if, like, this is ridiculous. And I can, I can see it from her perspective. And I guess the question would be, person as devout as Sarah, who she, she really sacrificed everything. You know, together with Avram, with Abraham, and here she is, you know, angels of God are coming, and she's laughing as if what they're saying is ridiculous. I mean, how does that work? Um, yeah, you know, I was really intrigued by that part of the story as well, and what's actually even more surprising is that Avram also laughs, but Sarah is criticized for her laughter, and he's not. So, you know, if you want to actually know the answer to this question, you probably have to listen to class number three or do some more research on your own. But without giving away the complete answer, when it comes to laughter, there's actually nuances to laughter. And it's important to understand that there is laughs that are good and laughs that are less than desirable. And Sarah actually understands this message really well at the end of the story. And that laughter is really important to who we are as Jews. I mean, maybe that's why there's so many Jewish comedians. But um, Yitzchak actually means laughter. So God is having the last laugh and we get to laugh throughout Jewish history as well. Well, I guess that's also an indication that the laughter that she had was so integral to the story because yes. the child that she had as a result is named that. Right. A question that I ask all of our instructors is, we have people watching this video. The course hasn't started yet. Enrollment is open. People can sign up. And some people are going to look at it and say, you know, I only have so much free time where I can, you know, pursue an interest of mine. It could be studying something in Torah. It could be studying something else. It could be, you know, sitting outside sipping an iced tea. Why, would, why do you suggest to them or why would you encourage them to take this course? Why do you think it's something which is valuable and worthwhile for their time, their spare time to take this course? Many people are very familiar with the stories of the Bible. I mean, they learned it in Hebrew school. They've read them as children. 
but there's something very different about revisiting the story as an adult and looking at it with fresh new eyes, not from the eyes of a little child. And in this course, we're actually going to be exploring the story from the lens of a range of commentaries, classical commentaries to contemporary commentaries. And we're really going to pull apart the story in a very textual way. So for anybody who likes rich, engaging textual study, then this is for them. But in addition to that, there's a tremendous focus on the contemporary relevance. I mean, it's about men and women and their relationships. It's about leadership. It's about laughter. Um, it's about purpose, meaning, overcoming challenges. These are things that people in today's generation and every generation, they're, they're things that we all deal with. And when we can look at role models in the past who can provide guidance for us, it's quite an amazing thing. I mean, this is our forefather and our foremother, and that's really the definition of the word Torah. Torah means a teaching, and everything we learn in Torah provides guidance for our lives today. In addition to that, a personal passion of mine in Torah study, in addition to all of these things and the analytical textual study and the contemporary relevance is the fact that according to Jewish mysticism, when you study Torah, you're connecting with God's wisdom. Torah is God's wisdom. And it's kind of like giving God a big hug. So, you know, that's kind of cool. So if you want to do that, come join the class. Okay, so it sounds actually like you've experienced this story from, you've taken a story which seems for many, in many ways archaic, and it really came alive for you in, in, in a practical way. For sure. Okay. Well, there you have it. If you want this story, a uh, classic story, to become contemporary for you and to help you get through such common issues in life, or just have guidance, or like Mrs. Slavitsky said, just to embrace the Torah, join us and enroll for this course now. In addition, I want to remind you that all of our courses come along with fantastic handouts and source sheets which have key summaries of every lesson, so I encourage you to download them, print them, uh, and use those along with the lesson as you watch it or review the lesson with that handout. Additionally, we have quizzes for every single lesson, so make sure to take the quiz. Nobody else is, uh, is judging you on what you get. It's, it's, purely to, um, it's purely to test your own knowledge for yourself. And of course, we have a comment section under each video lesson and a Facebook group for discussion. And Mrs. Slavitsky is going to do her best to keep up with your questions and to uh, you know, be a part of the conversation and the discussion. So share your observations, ask questions, and uh, we look forward to learning this wonderful subject together.